the constructor for class bearing frame layout, which you see here at lines 32 through 45, receives the context, which is going to be the activity to which I attach an object of this class, and also a string representing the API key. Uh, and this is important because with Google Maps you have to have your own API key to be able to display the maps within your app. So we're going to be pulling that as we saw back in the route tracker class from our strings.xml file and passing it into the constructor here. Now after we call the superclass constructor we create the map view uh, programmatically here specifying both the context, again the activity in which we're displaying the map, and separately the API key. Without an appropriate API key, the map tiles will simply be empty when they're displayed on the screen. Now at line 37, we set the map view uh, clickability to true. This allows the user to interact with the map for things like panning and zooming the map. We also set the map as enabled because without making the map enabled, you can't click the map, you can't touch the map uh, and interact with it. Initially, we do not want to display satellite images, so we set satellite to false. And we also tell the map view to use its built-in zoom controls. Separately, down here at line 43, we set the layout parameters for the map view by calling the getChildLayoutParams method we defined up above. And again, this is going to scale the map view so that as we rotate it, it does not show blank areas in the corners of the screen. And then finally, we add the map view programmatically to the bearing frame layout that we're creating. And this becomes the one and only child of that bearing frame layout.